What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Gluten-Free Learning. Today we're going to be looking at the derivation of Simpson's one-third rule and only with a single segment. So this is another integration technique using numerical methods instead of the actual integration itself. And you'll see that it's actually pretty cool because we can actually do a integration by parts um, without doing the integration by parts. We're, we'll do it all numerically. So I'll do an example later on with that, but first let's just find out what uh, what I'm even talking about, what this even means. All right, so say we have some function f of x, and we are interested in finding the integral from a to b. And now, previously, in my last video, we did the trapezoidal method, and that was a first order technique. So we had quite a, bit, a large error, and it didn't actually give us that good of an approximation. With this, we actually get a better approximation because it's a second order. It's a second order approximation and we get a higher order polynomial, meaning that we can actually get a better, it'll, it'll fit the curve a little bit better, right? And it'll actually be closer because when we have a straight line, you know, if we were doing straight line approximations or whatever, we're gonna have a large error involved. So the good thing about this one is it's a better fit to our curve and it gives us a better approximation. So when we're doing with a single segment, our n is going to be equal to 2, meaning that we're going to have two panels, as I discussed before. So we want to find the midpoint, a plus b over 2. That's going to be our midpoint. Now these are our panels. That's our panel 1, and this is our panel number 2. So that's where the n equals 2 comes in, right? So we're going to do multiple segments later on in another video, but for now we're doing single segment approximation and this gives us a second order function. So if we draw in our function, we know that a second order polynomial is a parabola. And from A to B, finding the area under this curve, you know, we're gonna have some underestimates over here, but we're gonna have some overestimates over there, right? So we're gonna even out, it's gonna be a little bit better of an approximation. So let's clean this up a little bit. We'll call this F2 of X. The subscript is just meaning, you know, it's a second order. And we are going to be interested in the area under our second order curve from our uh, A to our B. So the main thing is you have to remember that you just need to take the midpoint. You need to find the midpoint and that's going to be where you put your section. That's going to be where you, where you split up your function at A plus B divided by 2. So the general form of a second order polynomial looks like this, right? So we have f2 of x equals a0 plus a1 of x, or a1 times x, plus a2x squared. So we all know that this is a second order polynomial because we've got our highest power, our highest order is squared. So that makes it a second order polynomial. And that's gonna be f2 of x, what we've defined over here. So looking at our equation, we've got three unknowns. We've got our a0, our a1, and our a2. So that's going to give us three equations and three unknowns. That's what we need to solve, right? That's what we need to come up with a solution and solve for these coefficients. All right, so we know that a is going to be our x0, right? And this is going to be our x1, and b will be our x2. Two. Those are three points that we do know because we're going to have, we're going to know what a is and we're going to know what b is, and therefore we have to know what a plus b over 2 is, and also we're going to know what our function is. We're going to be given f of x because we're asked to, you know, solve the integral between this interval, so therefore, you know, we're going to be, no, we're going to know what the function is. We're not looking for that. We're looking for the second order approximate, approximation. So if we plug our point into our second order polynomial function, say f2, plug in our point a, because we know a, that's our x0, right? So that is also the same as saying f of a, right? Because we look up here, we have our f of x function, and we've intersected at the same points. We've intersected our f2, our second order approximation function, at a and b, and then the midpoint. So we can say that f2 of a equals f of a, and all that equals is this, right? And similarly, f2 of a plus b over 2, which is our second point, 
is the same thing as our as our equation, our original f of x should be squared. All right, and then finally, f2 of b equals our original function at that same point. All right, so I'm gonna call this equation one, equation two, and equation three. So if you remember I said we need three equations and three unknowns, or we have three equations to solve our three unknowns. I've now just found those three equations. So fortunately, we gotta dig deep and do some linear algebra and solve these three equations for these three unknowns. I'm just gonna go ahead and write out the system in matrix form, and then just our coefficients, our a naught, a one, and a two, and what they equal. Uh, I encourage you to do them out yourself just so you can, you can practice your linear algebra skills, but um, you likely won't be able, you, you likely won't have to do this on a test. You just need to use the formula that I'm actually driving right now. So this is the matrix form. So this is our large matrix, and then this is going to be our unknown matrix, our A0, A1, and A2. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're after. And what does this equal? We know this equals F of A of a plus b over 2 and f of b right because we get this from this column there that's what we equal right and then we've got our coefficients then the large matrix everything that multiplies a naught goes in this row and column right here we have a 1 because we have 1 times a naught now the next component we look at what multiplies by a1 and that's right here so we just put an a and then everything that multiplies by a2 is a squared second row we've got an a naught we've got a 1 a plus b over 2 and a plus b over 2 all squared right because we just look at what's multiplied by the a2 and then finally, we've got a 1 again, we've got a b, and a b squared. So this is our matrix form. And you can use whatever technique you want to solve for this, and you get the following coefficients. So this is what you get. This is your a0, a1, and a2. So I encourage you again to uh, do it out yourself, but it's a lengthy process, so I'm not going to eat up all the time in this video just for solving a system of linear equations, because I know you guys all know how to do that. You should be experts at that by now if you've been following my channel. Um, numerical analysis. There's there's tons of uh, methods that I've that I've done on here. So uh, yeah, check those out if you don't know how to do it, and prove yourself that uh, this is what you get for a naught, a one, and a two. So that's your system of linear equations. Um, so now we want to get back to solving our integral, right, from a to b, because that's the normal question, or that's the original problem that we're trying to do. We're trying to solve f of x dx from a to b, and for convenience. I'm just going to write this out as f2 of x. Solve our second order equation that we had just solved for, right? We just found out that f2 of x is a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared. Right? The second order polynomial is always equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. And look, we just solved for a1, a1, and a2 with this, with this matrix. So now we can actually plug this in plug all those values in to this, to this uh, integral. And um, this is what it should look like. Next, so it should look like the integral from a to b of a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. And when you do this integral, a0x from a to b plus a1 over 2x squared from a to b plus a2 over 3x cubed from a to b and then we should get this there we go so this should be what the integral equals and now we've got these guys now we've got our a naught a1 and a2 to deal with right those are the last unknowns but they're not actually unknown because we've just solved for them up here in terms of a and b because a and b is known so we can plug everything in and that again is going to be a lengthy process so if you really want to do it I encourage you to do it yourself plug those values in and simplify everything and uh, then this is what you should get so the integral so this is what the integral equals this is the approximate area under the curve the approximate 
integral. This is the final answer. So this is basically the derivation of what we're looking for, the area under the curve. And this is a formula that you need to remember. And um, yeah, like I said before, you might not need to actually know how to derive it, but this, just so you have some better understanding, this is what we got. This is the, um, the derivation of the integral. And all you need to do is literally plug in you know, your numbers and, and solve for your integral. So I'm going to do an example, um, and you'll see that you can do integration by parts or something, a function that would require integration by parts without actually doing integration by parts. And that's pretty awesome because you can, you know, you can save some time because integration by parts could be pretty annoying. So why is it actually called, you know, the one-third rule? What does that even mean? Why is it the one-third rule? So it's called the one-third rule because if we look at our number line, we've got our A and our B. And then our midpoint was A plus B over 2. Length was H and H, right? H being the width of our segments. That's going to be the width of each panel or the width of our intervals that we're dealing with to approximate our function. So when we look at our our formula, our answer, we get H over 3, right? It's the one-third rule because H is equal to B minus a over 2. And then if we plug this into our h over 3, we've got 1 third times b minus a over 2. Hence the 1 third rule. And then this equals b minus a over 6, which is what we've got way up here. So that's where the 1 third rule comes in. Comes in. So that is it for the Simpsons one-third rule. Um, this is basically the formula that you need to know. Likely you'll be given this on tests or exams. Uh, but uh, yeah, so now you know where it came from and now you know why it's called the one-third rule. Um, in my following video, link will be in the description. I'm gonna have a, a little bubble here somewhere maybe linking you to it, but we're gonna do an example of uh, a function that we would normally have to use integration by parts. And we're gonna use this formula and do it in you know, less than a quarter of a page's work and show that it is pretty easy and effective when approximating integrals. So thanks for watching. If you like my uh, videos, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And if you want to check out my website, my link is in the description.